Okay, what I want to show you guys today is how to hack a Windows 7 operating system, which is still used in many, many businesses today. This will be using a reverse TCP connection along with Veil Evasion antivirus evading software. Uh, Alright, let's get started. Uh, first off, we're going to um, go into our Kali box and open up a terminal and you're just going to type in Veil Evasion. Uh, not like that. There actually is a dash in the middle. Okay, once you get there, it's going to tell you uh, right here, your payload's loaded. Um, as of this date, uh, it is 51. Um, this just tells you, you know, pretty much how to use the, the, uh, the program. So what I'm going to do is do a list, which will list the payloads. Um, now you can use any of these um, realistically. Um, any of these will work, um, but the one I've had the most success with, uh, which I still use to this day, is the Python shellcode inject AES encrypt. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go copy that, we'll go back down here and type use, and we will go ahead and paste this in here, and it brings me to the next screen. Um, now you don't have to really set anything. I leave everything as normal, um, untouched. You can make modifications to it. Um, for this demonstration, um, we don't have to make any changes. So we'll just type in generate. Uh, you want to leave uh, MSF uh, Venom as your uh, your place to supply the shell code. Um, you want to use the, re the interpreter reverse TCP. So we hit enter. Um, now you want to type the L host. The L host is your um, is your IP address for your Linux box where your hosting is going to be. So we will open up a terminal and we'll do an if config and I'm looking for Ethernet 0 which is 137, 4137. So I'll close that out. So we want 192.168.40.137 uh, Make sure that you write down all of these um, numbers so you don't forget. It, it's a good habit to write everything down. Um, that way you've got it. You don't have to memorize anything. I mean nobody's nobody's a, a true genius and has all the answers all the time. So if you write stuff down you'll never forget it. Um, your L port, uh, what you want to do is you want to create a port that is not going to look suspicious to uh, infosec people. Um, you know, numbers like 1111 and 2222 and 4444, uh, you know, 1234, 9876, they're going to get you nailed almost every single time. Um, so this, this I'm just going to do something simple, 1452. Um, this just allows you to add extra um, MSF Venom options. Um, you can look them up through the uh, through the MS MSF console uh, and just do a a uh, Venom help. 
So we'll leave that alone. It's generating the shell code. Now uh, this could take a few minutes depending on the system. Um, uh, all right, now it's asking for the payload. This is your this is your name. Uh, what you want to name the file. So we're using uh, AES reverse TCP. Uh, and I, I believe I already have one in the system, but uh, then it's asking for the installer. Um, I usually use the default installer um, because the other two I've found actually get caught by antivirus uh, rather quickly, uh, especially Windows Defender, but there are ways to get around it. Um, now it's just building the code and it should finish up here shortly. And we are done. Alright, what this does is up here this tells you the language that it was encoded in. In this case, it was Python. Uh, this is where your file, your uh, payload file, was written to. Um, you know, the payload that was used, the shell code that was used, um, you know, your options, L host, L port. Uh, it's just telling you it was compiled to, to an exe. Um, now your your payload file itself was written in Python. This is a good thing to have um, on hand, uh, especially if you find that it works. Um, I would keep that in a safe spot, um, mainly because if it works now, you know it may not work later, but you might be able to make modifications to it to get it to work in the future. Uh, especially if you know Python. So that's something good to hang on to. Now we'll just hit the main menu button and exit out of it. Now what we're going to do is set up the handler. Um, now there are two ways to set up the handler. Uh, Veil Evasion creates a payload plus a matching handler for itself. The problem is, 80% of the time, the handler file does not always work. I will show you how to do that um, so that you have that knowledge um, in case they do decide to fix it in the future, or you can get it to run. Okay, so what we'll do is we will get to to root and then we'll do a cd var lib uh, veil evasion output and we'll go there and then we'll go into handlers all right once there you can see that it created it created our payload right here. Um, I already had one built, that's why I had to use this. Um, this just tells me that it's an AES encrypted, you know, reverse TCP connection. That's all that. That's all that tells me. And I, I like to file. I like to name it like that, 
that way um, that way you know what it is when you go in to to use it in the future um, but now that that's done um, this is your payload name this is your handler file what you want to do is you want to do a MSF console tack r and then the name of the file which is aes rtcp1 underscore handler dot rc um, I'm not showing much faith in this. Um, this is how you do it. It's supposed to load the handler immediately. Like I said, 80% of the time it doesn't work. I'm showing you this way just in case you do get it to work. Um, as you can see, it's looks like it's actually might work this time wow it is working this time that's a miracle um, usually usually you just have to do it you know using the uh, multi handler in um, MSF console and then you know selecting your setting your payload to you know interpreter versus TCP and then, you know, set your your L host, your L port, and that's usually it. Uh, this takes all the the legwork out of it, um, just by typing one line, which is a a major lifesaver. But like I said, it doesn't always work all the time. So now what we'll do is um, this is where you have to get crafty. Um, you have your payload. I'll show you where to get it. Um, it is in computer var lib uh, where is veil evasion? There it is. Veil evasion output compiled. Um, now you can see this is our payload. Um, to get this to your your victim or your target, however way you want to look at it, um, you need to be crafty. Um, for this purpose, I mean, you can you can send it via um, via a, a simple Python server. Um, you can set it up, you know through email you can you can mask it in another program um, just the the possibilities are endless really um, so we'll leave it up to you to get it to your victim um, but for now I'm just gonna transfer it over um, and uh, we will switch over to my victim computer as you can see the payloads there and when the victim will click on it they're gonna say alright it's doing something what's it doing oh what it's not doing anything damn I guess I gotta delete that so now we'll go back to our Our thing here, and we notice that interpreter session one was opened. Um, and it doesn't matter what they do, as long as they don't shut off the um, the system, we have access. Now, let me show you another trick. Once you have access, you want to you want to escalate your privileges, right? Um, so let's go to sessions. Uh, okay, so that's session one. So we'll do 
Attack I, session one. Okay, we have a interpreter shell, so I'm just going to do a get privs. And as you can see, I don't have many privileges. Um, I don't have admin privileges. I don't have anything. I'm just a plain old user, so I can't do anything. I can't even do hash dumps. Um, so it's it's gonna fail. Uh, most of the stuff you're gonna do, unless you have, you know, unless you have privileges, you're not gonna be able to do anything. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to run an exploit. So let's background the session. And we're going to do a search for um, UAC. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to utilize this exploit right here, which usually won't get caught by any virus on um, Windows 7 systems. So again, we're going to type in use. Oops. Guess would help if I added the file here. Now that we're in, we're going to show options. I believe there's only one it should be the uh, yes the session ID so we already know that our session is one so we're going to type set session one and we will show options again make sure it took it did now we'll just run it and if everything is good to go we should have a elevated shell uh... let's see oh it's because i didn't exit out of this uh... properly last time um, if you if you don't exit the the target system properly, apparently it throws this error, and um, you've got to clear out uh, this VBS on the target system. Um, it's not that hard to do. You just go to the system and delete the VBS. But I'll go ahead and do that and get right back to you. Okay, uh, as you can see, um, I deleted that stuff in there, uh, the old one, and um, ran it again, and this time it got me in. Uh, automatically sent, sent me to a interpreter session, which is good. So I'm going to do a get privs now. And as you can see, my stuff was escalated. So if I do a get system, which I probably don't need to do, I do it anyway, it got me in. Now I can do a hash dump. And it shows me the the password hashes that are in the system um, can do uh, I forget what it was
think it's um Oh yeah, screenshot. Tells you, you know, where it was saved. Um, this is the file name of where it is. So what we'll do is we will background this session Actually, you know what? We won't background it. We'll just open up another shell. Oh, we don't even need to. Go right here to output and then go to... Where did they put it? So here. There's our screenshot. this is um, is what is on the screen in Windows 7 and to prove it as you can see there it is uh, that's pretty much it um, if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave a uh, leave some feedback other than that, enjoy hacking and be safe.